Hello, thefreetutor.com welcomes you to a free tutoring lesson. The topic today is middle school math. Today we will be discussing estimating with whole numbers. This is a math skill that should be mastered by grade level 6. So let's get to it. Estimating with whole numbers. When we add or subtract, we typically round. To estimate sums or differences, we want to round each number to the same place before we add or subtract. Now, when we round, and as I said, we typically use rounding when we add or subtract in estimation. Um, when the question asks you to estimate, or when the question asks you about how many, or when, the, when, when an exact answer isn't possible, or when an answer is difficult to obtain, I would encourage you to memorize this point. Find your number, look right next door, four or less, just ignore, five or more, add one more. Now let's put this into action into, uh, into rounding numbers. For example, Let's say we want to round three. We want to round 368,971 to the nearest 10,000. Remember the point. The first line of the poem said, "Find your number." In this case, we want to round to the nearest 10,000, so the six is in the 10,000 spot. So in this case, we have circled the number in the 10,000s place. The next line of the poem says, "Look right next door." So in this in this example here, we've drawn an arrow to the right of the number that we're going to round, as you can see here. So there's, an, there's an arrow going from the 6 to the 8. The next line of the poem says 4 or less, just ignore. Well, 8 is larger than 4, so we're going to go to the next line of the poem. The next line of the poem says 5 or more, add one more. So in this case, we're going to add 1 to the 6, to the number that is circled. And so, by adding 1 to the 6, the 6 becomes a 7, and all the numbers to the right of the 7 become zeros, as you can see in this picture. So, 368,971 rounded to the nearest 10,000 is 370,000. Let's try this one more time. Let's look at, look, look, look at another example. Let's uh, round 35,327 to the nearest 1,000. Remember the point. Find your number. In this case, the 5 is in the thousands place, so that 5 is circled. Next line of the poem, look right next door. Again, we're going to draw an arrow from the number that we're going to, to round to the, to the right. And so you can see that, 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 that there is a 3 to the right of the 5, according to the arrow. Okay, now the next line of the poem says 4 or less, just ignore. Well, since 3 is less than 4, we do not change the 5. Okay, we leave the 5 alone. And so what we can do is we'll change all the numbers to the left of, of the 5 to zeros. And so our answer, 35,327 uh, 35, rounded to the nearest 1,000 is 35,000. This poem can also be used for estimating with money, or rounding with money, rather. Let's say we want to round a number to the nearest dollar. Again, remember the point. Find your number. In this case, the 5 is in the dollar spot, so we circle the number where the dollars are. The next line of the poem says, look right next door. Again, draw an arrow from the number you want to round to the number to the right, as you see in this picture. The next line of the poem says, four or less, just ignore. Eight is greater than four, so go to the next line of the poem. Five or more, add one more. So since eight is greater than five, we're going to add one to uh, the five that is circled in the number. So the 5 becomes a 6, and we change all the numbers to the right to zeros. And so our answer is five and eight, $5.87 is rounded to the nearest dollar is $6. This also works with decimals. Say, for example, we want to round 4 and eight, 871 thousandths to the nearest tenth place. Again, remember the point. Find your number. In this case, the number in the tenths place is the 8, so we have circled it. Look right next door, so we're going to draw an arrow from the 8 to the 7. That's the number that's going to determine how we're going to round the 8. The 7 is greater than 4, so we're going to go to the next line of the poem. Because the next line of the poem says 4 or less, just ignore. But the 7 is greater than 4, so, so we go to the next line, and the next line of the poem says 5 or more, add one more. So since 7 is greater than 5, we're going to add 1 to the 8. And the 8 becomes a 9. So as we change the 8 to a 9, we drop all the numbers to the right of the nine, and so the answer, eight, excuse me, four and eight, eight hundred seventy-one thousandths rounded to the nearest tenth place is four nine tenths. 
So hopefully this has helped you with just rounding in general and I would encourage you to continue to look at this until you get used to it and can do it on your own. Now let's use this use these rules to help us add an estimation problem. When we add we typically round. For example 37 plus 62 plus 48. Now when we do addition it's always easy to line our numbers up vertically or up and down. That's, so that would be step one. Remember we're going to typically round the same numbers in the same place value. Typically, you need to make sure you actually read the problem correctly. Sometimes you have to round some different numbers, but nonetheless, and typically we're going to round to the greatest place value unless, of course, the problem tells you to do it differently. So unless the problem says differently, we will round to the greatest place value, and in this case, we're going to round our numbers to the nearest tens place. So we're going to round to the nearest tens place. Remember your point. Find your numbers and circle them. As you can see, each digit in the tens place in our numbers are circled the 3, the 6, and the 4. Remember the rest of the point. The point says look right next door. As you can see I've drawn arrows from my circle numbers to the numbers to the right. And then I remember the rest of the point. Five, uh, 4 or less, just ignore. 5 or more, add one more. 7 is greater than 5, so I add one more there or round up. The next one in 62, 2 is less than 5, so in that case we're going to round down or ignore. And then the 8 is greater than 5. In that case, we're going to add one more or round, or round up. Okay? So just take a quick look at this picture and see what we've done. Now, if we follow the point and we've done what we're supposed to, what we should, should end up with is step 4. The 37 becomes a 40, 62 becomes 60, 48 becomes 50, and now we're ready to do the addition. 40 plus 60 plus 50 is 150. So, um, in this particular case, 37 plus 62 plus 48 is almost equal to 150. Okay. Now the same rules apply when we subtract. When we subtract, we typically round. For example, 94 minus 32 minus 41. Again, just like we did with the addition problem, we want to line our numbers up vertic uh, vertically or up and down. And unless the problem says differently, we will typically round to the greatest place value. In this case, we're going to round our numbers again to the tens place. So remember the rounding rules. Remember, remember the point. Find your number and circle them. So the numbers in the ten, uh, the, the digits in the tens place have been circled: the nine, the three, and the four. Continuing with the point, now we're going to look to the right of each of our numbers. Look right next door. We use arrows to do to, to do that, and then we're going to use the rest of our point to help saw our round our numbers. Uh, four or less, we just ignore. Five or more, we add one more. Now each digit that the arrows are pointing to in this problem are, are all digits less than 5 or less than 4, 4 or less. 4 is less than 5, 2 is less than 5, 1 is less than 5. So in each case we're going to ignore or round down. And so on the next slide here you can see that we've done that. 94 becomes 90, 32 becomes 30, 41 becomes 40. And if you subtract those numbers you should get an answer of about 20. Okay, now, um, so estimate again, so when we subtract, so 92 minus 32 minus 42 is almost 20, or almost equal to 20. Now, when we multiply or divide, sometimes we round, but most of the time we use compatible numbers. This is a little different, you need to pay close attention to this. Um, using compatible numbers, or using numbers that are close to the actual numbers, and are easy to compute mentally. For example, when we multiply, we use compatible numbers. For example, 290 times 22. 290 times 22, we want to find numbers that are close to the actual numbers but are easy to multiply in your head. So what we're going to do is we're going to change those numbers to 320. So 290 becomes 300, 22 becomes 20, 20 and 300 times 20 is 600. So 290 times 22 is almost equal to 600. Now notice we could have used some different numbers. We could have used 300 times 22, but that would have been a little bit that would have been harder than 300 times 20. Or we could have used 300 times 30, but those numbers are not as close as 320. Again, I would encourage you to review these slides when using compatible numbers. We also use compatible numbers when we divide. For example, here we want to divide 298 divided by 16. We're going to change 298 divided by 16 to 300 divided by 15, and so the actual number is pretty close to 20. 
Well, this is another free homework help from thefreetutor.com. Please visit us for more homework help. Thanks.